In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear brake pads and rotors on this Ford Flex. You'll have rear brakes located behind each of your rear wheels. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you wanna do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the suspension is hanging and the wheels off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel off, we have a clear view of our brake caliper. You'll find on the back side of the caliper, you have two 13 millimeter headed bolts holding the caliper to the bracket. Remove the pair. I'll start by loosening this top one. Leave that in there just a couple threads. Fully remove the lower bolt. here as well. Gently pry your caliper out of place with a small pry bar. Once you have the caliper dismounted, you want to pay attention along this area. This is the caliper piston and around it is the seal. If you see any fluid coming out of this area, you have to replace the caliper. Now before we go too much further, we want to talk a little bit more about the caliper itself. On this type of caliper piston, you have to twist this clockwise while pressing it in. Most caliper pistons, you can just press right in without having to twist. This one on the other hand is a little bit different. Looking at the caliper piston, you can see two slots, one down along the bottom area and one up along where the top would be. That's the areas that you need to grip into while pressing and twisting this clockwise. This can be done with multiple different tools. You can try using a tool that looks like this. You just find the two pieces that fit directly into the piston and use a 3 8 extension with a ratchet. At that point, you can turn it, push it, and twist it in. Otherwise, you could also use a tool that looks like this. For me personally, I'm going to use this tool. I'll slide it into place, making sure that I align each of those two tabs with the corresponding slots on the caliper piston. Let's get this to stay. Now I'm going to remove the slack in between my tool and the caliper. And now we'll continue on with turning in the center. While we're doing this, we're being extremely careful not to damage our caliper boot in any way. If you break that, you have to replace the caliper. Once you feel as though you have the piston all the way, just double check to make sure you have each of these two tabs facing straight up and down. It's very important because there is a little notch on the brake pad that fits into this area. Once you're sure that that's all the way pushed in and the boot is still in good condition, go ahead and set this aside. Now let's have another look behind the brake rotor. You're going to find that you have two 15 millimeter headed bolts that hold the caliper bracket to the rear knuckle. Remove the pair. Loosen the top, fully remove the bottom.
Remove your caliper bracket, give it a quick inspection, and set it aside. We will be working on this a little more later. Now we can start removing our brake rotor. It's a good idea to use a little bit of penetrant. You'll find that you have a T40 torque screw holding the rotor to the wheel bearing located behind it. Let's remove that. Remove your brake rotor. Now that we have the brake rotor off of there, it's important to make sure that you clean down the mating surface on the wheel bearing where your brand new brake rotor will sit against. We'll use some parts cleaner and a wire brush and get this cleaned up. Give it a quick inspection for any raised or imperfect areas, something like that will cause a brake pulsation. Let's continue with that brush and get in between the wheel bearing and the backing plate. We're trying to remove any dirt or miscellaneous debris that might be in this area. Let's give it another rinse. Continue on with some anti-seize along the mating surface of the wheel bearing where the brand new rotor will sit. All right, now it's time to install our brand new brake rotor. Let's take this and put it in place. Use your T40 torque screw and put that on there. This is going to hold the rotor. You'll notice that I did not clean down the braking surface on the rotor because it has a specialty coating. It doesn't need to be cleaned unless for some reason you get some grease on it. Let's snug this up. Now let's shift our focus to the caliper bracket. It's time to start preparing it. On the caliper bracket, you'll find that you have four metal clips. These clips go in between the brake pad and the bracket itself. Your kit came with brand new ones, so you can take these and set them aside for recycling. Now once you have all those off of there, it's time to continue on to each of the caliper slider pins. We'll just grab onto this, give it a little twist, and remove it, being extremely careful not to damage the caliper slider boot. Break it free down along the bottom there. The same up along the top of the slider pin. Now as you remove each of the slider pins, you want to give them a close inspection. Make sure it doesn't look like they're rotted or damaged in any way. You also want to pay attention to the far tip of it. On one of the caliper slider pins, you're going to find a rubber vibration dampener. It's important to make sure you take note of which side of the caliper bracket this pin came out of. Now once we have that one out of there, we can remove the boot. You just want to give it a quick stretch, make sure it's soft and pliable, and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. We'll clean this up in a minute. Now let's do the same to the other slider pin. All right, there's our slider pin that has the vibration dampener on it. A quick inspection of the shaft area. We'll set this aside, once again, taking note of which side of the caliper bracket it came from. Remove that slider boot, quick stretch, soft and pliable, set that aside. Now we can continue on cleaning the rest of the bracket. On each side of the bracket, you remember that you had two tins. Clean the area on the bracket where the brand new tin will sit. We'll use a wire brush for this. All right, once you have one side of the caliper bracket done, continue on to do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that we have both sides of that clean, we'll continue on to our caliper slider ports. These go directly into the bracket. It's important to make sure you clean out any miscellaneous dirt or debris inside this area. 
we'll use some parts cleaner and a bore brush. The next thing that we'll pay attention to is right along this area of the caliper slider port. There's a small ridge. You're going to want to make sure you have that clean and free of any debris. That's where the caliper slider boot will sit and it helps prevent moisture from getting in. At this point we can set the caliper bracket aside and move along to each of the slider pins and boots. We'll use some parts cleaner on each one of these caliper sliders. Clean down the entire shaft area. We'll give it another inspection to make sure it doesn't have any pitting. And then pay special attention up inside this area. Just like on that caliper bracket, there's a small groove where the caliper slider boot sits. Make sure it's clean and free of any debris. Once you've done one, continue on to do the same to the other. For this one, this is the one that has the rubber vibration dampener. I'll just go ahead and pull that right off of there. We'll set that aside and clean that caliper slider pin. Just give it a quick inspection. Double check the groove. Assuming that looks good, we can set this pin aside as well. Now we can move along to that vibration dampener. For this, I like to use a nice clean rag, something that does not have any parts cleaner on it, because we don't want to swell this rubber in any way. By swelling it, it's going to cause damage and cause breaking issues. We'll just wipe it down, make sure it's soft and pliable, and it's not torn, worn, or damaged in any way. I'm going to wipe out the center area here as well. Now we can put that in place on our caliper slider. We'll just press it right on here. This is easiest if you cup your finger over the end of it. Just press it right on. Make sure it's completely situated all the way around. Now let's move along to those caliper slider boots. For the caliper slider boots, we're going to continue on with that clean rag that does not have any parts cleaner on it. Go ahead and roll it up and slide it right on through the center. We'll pull it through a little bit. And now I'm just going to rub this around, making sure that the rag is touching on all areas of the inside of that caliper slider boot, trying to remove any dirt or miscellaneous debris from inside. Once you feel as though you have it all cleaned out, just go ahead and give it another quick inspection. Soft and pliable, not torn or worn. We'll set that aside and do the same to the other one. That looks good. Now we can start reassembling our caliper bracket. Let's start at one of the caliper slider ports. Use a little bit of your high temperature caliper lubricant directly inside of that port and then also make your way around the outer edge where the boot's going to ride. Continue on with your caliper slider boot. You'll find on one side of it, it has an area that protrudes from the inside out. That faces towards the caliper itself, leaving the wider hole facing out and away. Just press this right into position. Make sure it's on there securely and give it a little twist to work in that grease. Continue on to your caliper slider pin. Let's add some of that high temperature caliper lubricant all along the shaft of the slider pin, making our way all the way up into the groove closest to my fingers. That's once again where the boot will sit. Let's slide this in here.
press that all the way in, squeeze out any air that might be located inside of the boot. We'll work this around to make sure that the grease is settled in perfectly and then do the same on the other side. There we are. Make sure that both of your caliper slider pins flow smoothly. Now we'll continue on to those four areas on the caliper bracket that we had cleaned up. We've got two on one side of the bracket and two on the other. Now let's have a look at our caliper bracket tins. You want to find in your kit two tins that look the same. You want to make sure that they have a flat area along the bottom and then a tab that protrudes out to one side. You can see these two match up perfectly. And then you want two that are the opposite. Once again, the flat area along the bottom, but it has the tab on the opposite side. So two of each. Now with that said, we can start installing these. We'll make sure we have that tab facing out and away from where the rotor would be, and we have the flat area facing towards what would be considered down. Let's get the other one on there. Double check to make sure you have the tabs facing out as they should and the flat areas are facing in the downward position. We'll do the same on the other side of the bracket. Now at this point, we'll just clean up our mess and make our way back over to the vehicle. Let's take that caliper bracket and put it in position over the brake rotor. Now we can start in both of our mounting bolts. Now we'll snug these up and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. Now we can install our brake pads. Let's put this in position. Once you feel as though you have it in place, make sure you can still move it around easily so it's not stuck in place up against the rotor. Now let's have a look at the caliper itself. Continue on with some of that high temperature caliper lubricant. Put a thin amount along the caliper piston and then along the back side of each of these ears. Essentially all the areas that the brake pads will be touching up against. This will help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. Let's slide this into place. Now we'll continue on with our two caliper slider bolts.
Once you have each of those snug, torque them to 24 foot-pounds. Okay friends, now we can install our wheel. Start on all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out, we'll get the wheel safely back on the ground, and then torque each of them to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel back on the ground, let's torque these in a crisscross manner. Okay friends, we showed you how to install one side of your rear brakes, pads, and rotors. The process will be the exact same thing for the other side of the vehicle. After that, go ahead and make your way into the passenger compartment, pump up that brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.